Hey, I'm Cara Santa Maria, and I'm a science communicator. I come from Los Angeles, California. Actually, born and raised in Texas, but now I live in LA. I do my own podcast, Talk Nerdy, and I'm also a rogue on the Skeptic's Guide to the Universe, among other um, jobs. So we're here in Melbourne. Uh, it is early December. We're at Skepticon 2019. So I think it takes a bit to get to the central thesis of my talk that I shared here at Skepticon. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to easily summarize it in 30 seconds. But ultimately the idea is that as skeptics, sometimes we ascribe to kind of a more fundamentalist, logical, positivist epistemology. So it's a lot of big words to basically say that oftentimes skeptics believe that science can answer every question that exists in the world. And although science is the best tool that we have for understanding the world as it exists, it's simply not capable of answering every single question. And I think that maybe sometimes as skeptics, we could use a little more constructivism in our life. Now constructivism, I think we often poo-poo and we kind of um, believe that it's something that it's really not. Constructivism is the belief or the understanding that although reality exists in the world, we're only ever going to be able to see it through our own human lenses, through our own human filters. And to have a little bit of humility in understanding that the tools that we use, the perception that we have, is the only way that we can really make sense of the world, I think that kind of humility can take us a lot of places and it'll make us more effective communicators. Yeah, I mean, we view the world through the paradigms that we've developed through culture and through you know, the types of scientific tools that we have at our disposal, but there are whole aspects of the cosmos that we haven't been able to peer into. You know, gravitational wave astronomy is a good example. Up until we developed detectors that allowed us to see gravitational waves, we could only do astronomy within the electromagnetic spectrum. And now we have a whole new type of astronomy available to us. You know, there are a lot of things, concepts, constructs. For example, love. How do you study love scientifically? How do you even know that love exists? You know, I think if you were an extreme logical positivist, you might say, well, it doesn't matter. Love is irrelevant, but that's a really sad way to live your life, right? I know there's such a thing as love. You know there's such a thing as love. Can we really study it scientifically? Not at the moment, but like what you said before was interesting. You, you brought up, we've just gotten onto the ability to look at the universe through the lens of gravitational waves. What if we could um, brain scan and get crisp, um, non-leaky models of what it, it's like to experience? Do you think that's possible in the future? Perhaps, but think about it this way. Is your experience of love the same as my experience of love? Is what you call love the same thing as what I call love? Love in and of itself is a construct. It is a human construct. It's not something that exists without us. And so because it is constructed, our experiences of it will always be subjective. And there will probably always be variance in the science. That's interesting, yeah. Mm. I'd, I'd like to know what do you think that um, if we do get to a stage where we can really look in, peer into the mind through, I don't know, whatever brain scanning technologies around in like 30 years time or 40 or hundreds, will there be a, um, more commonalities than there is differences between people's internal representations of something like love? So one of the things that I find really interesting about psychology research and a big part of what matters to me as somebody who focuses on social justice is that there are a lot of differences between people from a multicultural perspective, right? We know that cultures are not monolithic, but we also know that there are vastly different um, expectations and perspectives within one culture versus another. But that said, what we find almost time and time again is that there's more individual variation within cultures than there is between cultures. So I think in some ways we have to remember, just like it's never nature or nurture, it's, you know, it's a blending of all of our differences and all of our similarities. That's what makes us truly human. What sort of um, breakthroughs in science and technology are you really looking forward to or you, you would like to see in the uh, near to medium future? I think sometimes we think about science and technology in kind of a black and white way that's maybe not the, it's, 
I think it actually leads us astray when it comes to science journalism. So breakthrough, I think, is a strong term. I think science actually iterates more often than it breaks through. It happens in fits and starts. Um, I think that some of the genetic sequencing technology and the manipulation technology that we have is really interesting and it's going to open a up a lot of windows. I think there are amazing things happening in cosmology and like, like deep sky astronomy. Um, but I think we're going to see these small changes that lead to big cumulative differences instead of a lot of massive breakthroughs like we might have seen 100, 200, 500 years ago. I'm just regurgitating. <laughs> yeah, right. Sorry, so that. often. No, no, no. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, actually, I'm going to I'm going to use your variation on that that word, um, accumulative mm -hmm. uh, changes. I think that makes more sense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, like, I'm really excited about like skepticism and what it, how it teaches people to critically think about the world around them. What aspects of um, skepticism would you like to see more of in the world, and how would you like to see them come about, like education or um, different sort of uh, ways of thinking about, like a uh, culture? Yeah, I think that skepticism um, is something that we accept within our community readily. I think that there are a lot of institutions that accept skeptical ideas as it stands. I think that one thing that we have to remember is that the people who call themselves skeptics and the people who come to the conferences, that's not all the people there are out there that think skeptically. Um, so we're already seeing it kind of spread throughout the world. But sure, I'd love to see more skepticism in education. I'd love to see more skepticism in medicine. But I think probably the place where we need it the most right now is in politics. I'd like to see more evidence-based um, policy changes happening throughout the world, and especially in the United States. Yes, yes and also in England. <laughs> yeah.